So a few announcements. Um, actually, first off, uh, before any of the announcements, since Mass will start with the blessing of the fire, anybody who would want to witness the blessing of the, father, of the fire with Father uh, can go uh, there now, and especially invite those who will be uh, receiving sacraments tonight. So uh, at this point, if anybody wants to go to the back uh, to witness the blessing of the fire, do so at this point. Now for pandemic protocols, just a quick word, uh, mask wearing is optional, uh, no collection during mass, uh, but you are invited to use donation baskets and boxes at each entrance. Um, there are three announcements, so the Easter Mass schedule, uh, the Sunday Mass tomorrow morning is at 9 and at 10.30, there are two Masses, 9 and 10.30. The next announcement is about the Knights of Columbus, the Spring Cleanup Fundraiser. So if you want help cleaning up uh, your yard, um, they're there for you. So uh, do you need help cleaning up your yard? The Knights will be holding a Spring Yard Cleanup Fundraiser on two Saturdays, not one, but two, April 30th and May 7th from 9 to noon. Those are two Saturdays. And proceeds will help fund the Knights Annual Co Coats for Kids program. A minimum donation of $20 per yard is requested, and to re request yard work, or if you're interested in assisting, so you can either benefit or also provide help with the yard work, please contact Jeffrey Edwards. Um, his phone number is on the top page of the bulletin. Uh, so for these events, by the night, more details can be found in the bulletin, as I said, and on the website. The third announcement is the Hike for Life, which is also happening on Saturday, April 30th. Our parish designated hiker this year is Father Frank. Details on how to sponsor Father Frank, Frank Francis Scott are on the pledge forms in the church pews. So your pews should have, should have pledge forms. Forms are to be mailed directly to Action Life, or you can put them in the Sunday offering basket. Checks, if you're doing a check, uh, are to be made to Action Life, not to the parish. And there's more um, info in, in the bulletin, and at the poster is at each entrance. And oh yes, the social last one, social action spring rubber sale. Um, if you have any questions, come and see me because I'm intimately involved. Uh, mark your calendars, and it's going to be April 30th, Saturday, April 30th. That's a big day. Tons of things happening on Saturday, April 30th. So from 10 to noon, it's in the basement hall. Uh, there's a need for volunteers uh, in the days preceding and on the daily sale. So, and there's also more details once again in the bulletin. All right, so good evening. A very warm welcome to all who are joining us for Mass in person or who are viewing on, online. St. Augustine Parish welcomes you to the source and summit of Christian life the most holy sacrifice of the Mass. This evening we celebrate the Easter Vigil Mass. St. Augustine said that the Easter Vigil, the night when Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, is to be considered the mother of all vigils. And during this night, the people of God keep watch as they await the resurrection of the Lord and celebrate it in the sacraments of initiation. Let us truly enter into the mysteries that we celebrate. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of the Miso Ole Kipusi. Now, to begin our worship, we turn to the church entrance with Father Frank for the blessing of the, fire, of the fire. And those of you, once again, close to the entrance, feel free to join Father Frank. So we can start the the earth. So we have to close all those artificial lights. Oops. And of course, vigil means all night. So we have all night. Of course, usually I would be outside, but it's, it's kind of a cool, um, cool night. So friends, we gather. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, commitment in the Holy Spirit be with you all. Dear brothers and sisters, on this most sacred night, on which our Lord Jesus Christ passed over from death to life, the Church calls upon her sons and daughters scattered throughout the world to come together to watch and pray. If we keep the memorial of the Lord's Paschal Solemnity in this way, listening to his word and celebrating his mysteries, then we shall have the sure hope of sharing his triumph over death and living with him in God. Let us pray. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, all this, all the book. O oh God, who through your Son bestowed upon the faithful the fire of your glory, sanctify this new fire, we pray. We will have a fire. Sanctify this fire and grant that by these Paschal, this Paschal celebration we may be inflamed with heavenly desires that with minds made pure we may attend festivities of unending splendor through Christ our Lord. Amen. Now you'll notice on the Paschal candle we have the imagery of the cross. Christ yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, the Alpha and the Omega, all time belongs to him, and all the ages, to him be glory and power, for every age, forever and ever. Amen. May the light of Christ rising in glory dispel the darkness of our hearts and minds. So, do Richard just to light your candle? Or taper there. So just follow me slowly to your places. Now let us hear it as we have our counter sing the exalted. Oh. 
This is the Easter proclamation, really testifying to our faith history. Dispels wickedness 
the work of peace and of your servants' hands, an evening sacrifice of praise, this gift from your most holy church. Therefore, O Lord, we pray you that this candle, hallowed to the honor of your name, may persevere until to overcome the darkness of this night. Receive it as a pleasing fragrance, and let it mingle with the lights of heaven. May this flame be found still burning by the morning star. The one morning star who never sets, Christ your Son, who coming back from death's domain, has shed his peaceful light on humanity, and lives and reigns forever. saved his people, and in these, the last days, has sent us his Son as our Redeemer. Let us pray that our God may complete this possible work of salvation by the fullness of redemption. Please be seated. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was evening, and there was morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters, and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome, and it was so. God called the dome sky, and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening, and there was morning the third day. And God said, 
Let there be lights in the dome of the sky to separate the day from the night. And let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be lights in the dome of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made the two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night and the stars. God set them in the dome of the sky to give light upon the earth, to rule over the day and over the night, and to separate the light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. And God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind, with which the waters swarm, and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw that it was good. God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the waters in the seas, and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening, and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, Let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things, and wild animals of the earth of every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind, and the cattle of every kind, and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let us make man in our image, according to our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the wild animals of the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created him. Them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and fill the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant-yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with seed in its fruit. You shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw everything that he had made, and indeed, it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who are wonderfully in the ordering of all your works, may those you have redeemed understand that there exists nothing more marvelous than the world's creation in the beginning, except that at the end of the ages, Christ your Passover has been sacrificed. Who lives and reigns forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry out to me? Tell the children of Israel to go forward. But you, Lift up your staff and stretch out your hand over the sea and divide it, that the children of Israel may go into the sea on dry ground. Then I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians so that they will go in after them. And so I will gain glory for myself over Pharaoh and all his army, his chariots and his chariots drivers. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord when I have gained glory for myself over Pharaoh his chariots, and his chariots, drivers. The angel of God, who was going before the Israelite army, moved and went behind them. And the pillar of cloud moved in front of them and took its place behind them. It came between the army of Egypt and the army of Israel. And so the cloud was there with the darkness and lit it up the night. One did not come near the other all night. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. The Lord drove the sea back by a strong east wind all night and turned the sea into dry land and the waters were divided. The children of Israel went into the sea on dry ground. The waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. The Egyptians pursued and went into the sea after them. All of Pharaoh's horses, chariots, and chariot drivers, then at the morning watch, the Lord in the pillar of fire and cloud looked down upon the Egyptian army and threw the Egyptian army into panic. He clogged their chariot wheels so that they turned with difficulty. The Egyptians said, Let us flee from the children of Israel. For the Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea, so that the water may come back upon the Egyptians, upon their chariots and chariot drivers. So Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at dawn, the sea returned to its normal depth. As 
the Egyptians fled before it, the Lord tossed the Egyptians into the sea. The waters returned and covered the chariots and the chariot drivers. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed them into the sea, not one of them remained. But the children of Israel walked on dry ground through the sea, the waters forming a wall for them on their right and on their left. Thus, the Lord saved Israel that day from the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw the great work that the Lord did against the Egyptians. So the people feared the Lord and believed in the Lord and in his servant Moses. The prophet Miriam, Aaron's sister, took a tambourine in her hand and all the women went out after her with tambourines and with dancing. Moses and the children of Israel sang this song to the Lord. Without money and without price. 
Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the people, a leader and commander for the people. See, you shall call the nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you. Because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, for he has glorified you. Seek the Lord while he may be found, Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked person forsake their way, and the unrighteous person their thoughts. Let that person return to the Lord, that he may have mercy on them, and to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than yours, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from the heavens, and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the one who eats, so shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. The word of the Lord. In accordance with their conduct and their deeds, I judged them. 
But when they came to the nations, wherever they came, they profaned my holy name, in that it was said of them, These are the people of the Lord, and yet they had to go out of his land. But I am concerned for my holy name, which the house of Israel had profaned among the nations to which they came. Therefore, say to the house of Israel, Thus says the Lord God, It is not for your sake, O house of Israel, that I am about to act, but for the sake of my holy name, which you have profaned among the nations to which you came. I will sanctify my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, and which you have profaned among them. And the nations shall know that I am the Lord, says the Lord God when through you I display my holiness before their eyes. I will take you from the nations and gather you from all the countries and bring you into your own land. I will sprinkle clean water upon you and you shall be clean from all your uncleanness and from all your idols I will cleanse you. A new heart I will give you and a new spirit I will put within you and I will remove from your body the heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and make you follow my statutes and be careful to observe my ordinances. Then you shall live in the land that I gave to your ancestors and you shall be my people and I will be your God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
the first day of the week, at early dawn, the women that accompanied Jesus from Galilee came to the tomb, taking the spices that they had prepared. Now they found the stone rolled away from the tomb. But when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified, and they bowed their faces to the ground. But the men said, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Remember how I told you while he is still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified and on the third day he will rise again. Then the women remembered Jesus' words and returning from the tomb. They told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the other women with them and told this to the apostles. These words seemed to the apostles an idle tale, and they did not believe the women. But Peter got up, and he ran to the tomb. Stooping down and looking in, he saw the linen claws by themselves. Then he went home, amazed at what had happened. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to the Lord Jesus Christ. St. Augustine, our patron, aptly describes this night as the mother of all vigils. Now I'm sure some of you, if you had a restless child or what have you, you could be up all night. That's a vigil. It's a loved one who has died. Loved one surrounds the family grieving all night. That's a vigil. Some of you have been up all night working on exams or paper. That could be a vigil as well. So we have all night, lots of time. And of course, we know there's a few surprises with this night as well. Some of you may have visited this for the first time to experience an Easter vigil. But in uh, four parts, as we know, liturgy of light, liturgy of the word, liturgy of baptism, the Easter Sacraments and Liturgy of the Eucharist. Those four powerful stages of our faith journey where everything comes together tonight. There's something about the darkness, doing it at night. And as you see this tall big candle before me, a Paschal candle, Christ as our light, in Him there is no darkness at all. But it's the women who come to the tomb first, described in Luke. The women thought they would find a body to anoint. Instead, they found an empty tomb. You know, we should be running outside an empty tomb, as Pope Benedict would cry that cry in his visit to Israel not too long ago. They went to mourn the dead instead. They heard a proclamation of life. For this reason, the gospel tells us the women were seized with trembling and amazement. Amazement, we hear. A fear mingled with joy that took their hearts by surprise when they, when they saw the great stone before the tomb rolled away. And inside a young man in a white robe it's wondering, amazement, wonder at hearing the words, do not be afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who is crucified, he is risen. 
And those foul words, even John Paul II cries out with that, do not be afraid. You know, Mary giving birth to a son, or Joseph in the dream, be not afraid. That text is throughout the Gospels, as we know. And a message, he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him. Friends, may we too accept this message, the message of Easter. Let us go to Galilee, for the risen Lord is gone ahead of us. Yet, what does it mean? What does it mean to go to Galilee? To go to Galilee means first to begin anew. To begin something anew. For the disciples, it meant going back to the place where the Lord first sought them out and call them to follow him. Call them by name. The place of their first encounter with their first love. From that moment, leaving their nets, Behind them, they followed Jesus. They were changed and transformed for life. This is the first Easter message that I would offer you. It's always possible to begin anew. Perhaps for some of you, it's a new beginning. I know for Kenya, our adult candidate for baptism, this is a new beginning for him. And our two other adults for confirmation. A new beginning as they follow the Lord because there is a new life that God has awakened in us in spite of all our failures from the rubble of our hearts God can create a work of art from the ruined remnants of our humanity God can prepare a new history he never ceases to go ahead of us in the cross of suffering desolation and death, and in the glory of a life that rises again, a history that changes, a hope that is reborn. So in these past months, this past two years of the pandemic, let us listen to the risen Lord as he invites us to begin again, to begin anew and never lose hope, to never lose hope. Going to Galilee also means setting out on new paths. It means walking away from the tomb. The women were looking for Jesus in the tomb. They went to recall what they had experienced with him, <clears throat> which was now gone forever. They went to indulge in their grief. But there was a kind of faith that can become the memory of something once beautiful, now simple, to be recalled. Many people experience such a faith of memories as if Jesus were someone from the past or an old friend from their youth who is now far distant. But here, friends, let us go to Galilee then to discover that God cannot be filed away among our childhood memories, but is alive, alive and filled with surprises risen from the dead. Jesus never ceases to amaze us. And so the church provides and the scripture provides 50 days of Easter to encounter. It's not over tomorrow or Monday. It's 50 days. And that 50th day is Pentecost. That's the Greek word for 50th day. Then is the second message of Easter. Faith is not an album of past memories. Jesus is, is not outdated. He is alive here and now. He walks beside you each day in every situation you are experiencing. In every trial you have to endure. In your deepest hopes and dreams. Think of it. He opens new doors when you least expect it. You know, opening doors, opening to amazement, the newness Jesus brings, he will surely surprise you. And our candidates, once again, their story, as they've come to discover in a deep way the Lord and his Holy Spirit to guide them. And this is the third message, friends of Easter. Jesus, the risen Lord, loves us without limits. 
front of our lives. Having made himself present in the heart of our world, he invites us to overcome barriers, banish prejudices, and draw near to those around us every day in order to rediscover the grace of everyday life. Let us recognize him here in our Galilees in everyday life. With him, life will change. For beyond all defeats, evil and violence, beyond all suffering and death, the risen one lives and guides history. Dear brothers and sisters, if on this night you are experiencing an hour of darkness, a day that has not yet dawned, a light dimmed or a dream shattered, open your heart. This is the night. This is the opportunity. Open your heart with amazement to the message of the Easter. Do not be afraid. He is risen. He awaits you in Galilee. Your expectations will not remain unfulfilled. Your tears will be dried. Your fears will be replaced by hope. For the Lord goes ahead of you, always. He walks before you, and with him, life begins anew. Please rise. And now we have one uh, candidate for baptism and confirmation, the Eucharist, our catechumen. Uh, Kenton, if you would join me at the baptismal font while we sing the Litany of the Saints. Dear Bill, beloved, with one heart and one soul, let us, by our prayers, come to the aid of this, our brother, in their blessed hope, so that as they approach the font of rebirth, the Almighty Father may bestow on them all his merciful help. Pray for 
your profession of faith. Can you, do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried, rose from the dead, and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, communion of saints, forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting? Okay, come to the font. So just to bow your head over the water, and to close your eyes, take off your glasses, <laughs> and to just to look towards me. Just stand and put your hand on this phone. Can I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit? So the anointing after baptism will be chrism a little later with confirmation. This place of under. So I ask you with your sponsor and your, your mother to put all in Christ, that is the white garment as, as I wear, so you can go down and place the garment over you. Can you become a new creation and clothe yourself in Christ? Receive this baptismal garment, bring it on stage to the judgment seat of the Lord Jesus Christ so that you may have everlasting life.
given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, forgiven all our sins. May also keep us faithful for Lord Jesus Christ forever and ever. Amen. Lindsay, of your own free will, you've asked to be received into the full communion of the Catholic Church. You've made your decision after careful thought under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. I now invite you to, with your sponsor in the presence of this community to profess the Catholic faith. In this faith, you will be one with us for the first time at the Eucharistic table of the Lord Jesus, the sign of the Church of Unity. So if you can repeat after this text, I believe and profess. I believe and profess. All of the Holy Catholic Church believes, teaches, and proclaims to be revealed by God. Okay. Lindsay, the Lord receives you into the Catholic Church. His loving kindness has led you here. So that in the unity of the Holy Spirit, you may have full communion with us in the faith you have professed in the presence of his family. So my dear candidates for confirmation, by our baptism, you've been born again in Christ. You have become members of Christ and of his priestly people. Now you are to share in the outpouring of the Holy Spirit among us. The Spirit sent by the Lord upon his apostles at Pentecost and given by them and their successors to the baptized. The promised strength of the Holy Spirit which you are to receive will make you more like Christ and to help you to be witnesses to his suffering, his death and resurrection. It will strengthen you to be active members of the church and to build up the body of Christ in faith and love. And so, if you can join me in this prayer, this is the consecratory prayer of confirmation. O powerful God, Father of the Lord Jesus Christ, by water and the Holy Spirit, you freed your sons and daughters from sin and gave them new life. Send your Holy Spirit upon them to be their helper and guide. Give them the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of right judgment and courage, the spirit of knowledge and reverence. Fill them with the spirit of wonder and awe in your presence. We ask this through Christ the Lord. Amen. So to ask the sponsor to place your right hand behind the candidate's uh, shoulder. Can you be sealed with the Holy Spirit? Peace be with you. Then be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Lindsay, be sealed with the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. God bless you all. Let us offer our congratulations. bring to the Lord the prayers of our hearts in time as we carry many prayers, thoughts this night, from the darkness of this night transformed by the light of Christ.
for the church, the presence of the risen Christ in the world. May God's mercy and grace be upon her in her sacred mission. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all those who were received into the church this night, Kenyon, Ben, and Lindsay, may the, may the promise and grace of the sacraments of initiation fill their hearts with faith, hope, and love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. For all in need, the sick, the lonely, the unemployed, the refugee, may they find solace and consolation in the promise of the resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For this assembly, may the love and truth that God has poured into our hearts sustain us in all we do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. For those who are sick or suffering in any way, especially those named in our parish bulletin, may they know the strength of Christ's presence in their greatest time of need. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our For all those who have died, marked as Christ's own forever, may the risen Lord receive them into the fullness of life. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, eternal Father, you know the needs of our hearts and time. For all the prayers we raise, and, and this holy season, this holy night, and all Christian churches everywhere, seeking your presence. As uh, darkness is overcome by your light. This we ask and always through Christ the Lord. Please be seated.
says, my sacrifice and yours, maybe it's up to God, you know, the Almighty Father. Except we ask, O oh Lord, the prayers of your people, for the sacrificial offerings that what has begun in the Paschal Mysteries may, by the working of your power, bring us to the healing of eternity. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you.
Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God. Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, her patron of St. Augustine, with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence, we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Marcel, our Bishop, the order of bishops and all clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen, gracious in the prayers of this family whom you have summoned here before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, loved ones, friends, we hold dear. People of Ukraine, people that have died of COVID, all are pleasing to you at their passing from this life. Give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, O many Father, the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, now and forever.
reception of communion uh, for reception only in the hand as this virus continues to be around us. Just a reminder. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy. You should come under my roof. Only say the word, and I suppose she can get
Let us pray. Pour out on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you nourish by this Paschal Sacrament, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We bow our heads for the soul blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity, and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life and the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have brought to a close, may you celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast. Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And may the blessing of mighty God, the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thank you.